morning. Welcome to Sunday morning worship at St. Paul's Episcopal Church on Sunday, October 10th. We're glad that you have joined us online for a morning prayer. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him.
word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good, but God alone. 
You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for the sake, for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers, children and fields, with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if you are a guitar player, you'll know the answer to this riddle. How many guitars is enough guitars? Just one more. Now, insert whatever it is that you love to accumulate and collect. For many of us, it could be any number of things, couldn't it? For some of us, uh, collecting things is such a problem that we hoard. You can't even uh, get inside a home sometimes because people hang on to so much stuff. If you come to my house and look in my garage or go down in my basement, you'll see that various individuals have stored stuff that they can't keep in their houses in my house. The storage industry is now one of the biggest growth industries in the world, and it has been for a long time now because we have so much stuff, we can't even keep it in our houses. People like Marie Kondo have created TV shows and had best-selling books around how, how to help us deal with all of our stuff. The desire to have just one more is limitless. The young man who kneels at Jesus' feet today has been acquiring just one more property, uh, probably he's a landowner for years. He's been accumulating uh, the land and probably some of the possessions of people who are beleaguered by debt. So his wealth has been earned on the backs of people who are less fortunate than him. And yet he's at Jesus' feet right now because just one more has now uh, not become very satisfying to him. He's seen and heard uh, Jesus out doing his work and something in him has changed. He knows that there is something else other than his possessions and his wealth. There's something that's not quite right. So he has this moment with Jesus and he says, what must I do? I follow the commandments. Jesus says, follow the commandments. He says, I do that. Check. Jesus says, well, what else you must do? You must sell all you have and come follow me. See, it's a simple answer, but it's also a very hard and complicated answer for us. Because Jesus says, well, one way to come and follow me is to reconcile with your possessions and with all those things to which you are attached, to which you have a white-knuckled grip upon. Get rid of them. Sell them. Take the proceeds and use it to, to benefit the poor and come and follow me. 
That's true for all of us. All of us have also known the great liberation, the great uh, wonderful feeling that we get from taking our money, which is a symbol of our very hard work, and giving it away. I know what that feels like. You know what that feels like. Jesus promises that when we do that, uh, we're, we're not going to inherit some sunny afterlife. That's not what he's talking about today when he talks to the man. No, Jesus says when you do this, you then join in with the work of the kingdom of God that is unfolding even as we speak. God breaking into our world and making things right. Right. We do this in so many ways in this world. There's individuals who do this. Uh, There's uh, Sadio Mane from, from, uh, I believe, Senegal. He's a Premier League soccer player, makes about 10 million a year, and he gives most of it away. One of the articles I read about him said that he walked around with a cracked iPhone. And when someone asked him why he walked around with a cracked iPhone, he said, I don't need a bunch of cars. I don't need diamonds, I don't need watches, I don't need planes. In fact, um, I'm going to give away most of what I have, and he does. He gives away most of what he has to people in Senegal in order that they might have uh, enough to live. In one region, he gives every person in the region a stipend, I believe, of $70 a month, perhaps. Not very much, but for that part of the world, that's a lot of money. The median income in a place like Senegal uh, is around $1,000 a year. And and the the median household income here is around $15,000 a year, I believe, if I'm getting my figures right. We are a very rich country, yet none of us have enough stuff. And I believe some of that comes from the same emptiness that we feel uh, in common with the young man today who kneels before Jesus. We all, while we know uh, the, the glow of generous giving, we also know the emptiness of uh, stuff. We all know on some level that getting more and more stuff is not what is going to fill our hearts and it's certainly not going to build the kingdom of God or fill the bellies of people in this country that go hungry even as we speak. So I don't have a a pat solution for you other than to join with you and acknowledge that the struggle is real but that we are promised that the more we give, the more we will gain. The more we lose, the more we will gain. The more we give away, and the, the more we can empty out our lives of needless stuff, the more our hearts will be full. This is the pattern of life that we proclaim. This is the good news that we have for one another and for the world. One more will never be enough. So during this time of the year, during every time of the year, let's think about how we can take what we have, give it away, maybe give it away to the church in the form of planned giving. If you've never tithed before, think about doing it. There's great freedom in this. I've known a wonderful path these last 10 years of giving away more and more and more of my money every year. Uh, By percentage points, it keeps rising. And if you're at 0%, try a half percent, try 1%. I can tell you that it it, it has brought me great peace and great joy to know that my money, the symbol of my hard work, and my energy can be redirected and put to good use and to help God's kingdom happen in this world. 
We all have a tortured relationship with our stuff and with our money. And it is hard for us to enter into God's kingdom if we hold on to our money. But Jesus promises us that in letting go of our money and letting go of so many things, there's not loss. That we don't just have to grieve what we lose like the man today. There's great joy and great life. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing wherever we are. we may continually seek you and find you, that we may know deep in our hearts that we are yours. We lift our hearts and voices to you. Hear us, good Lord, that your grace may always precede and follow, that our lives may be signs of your kingdom and witnesses to your goodness. We lift our voices and hearts to you. Hear us, good Lord that there may be peace in our hearts and our churches between neighbors and nations. May the peace we seek begin with you and overflow beyond measure. We lift our hearts and voices to you. Hear us, good Lord. We give thanks for your extravagant care for us, for your seeking after us, finding us, and keeping us close. We pray that we may follow your model of loving kindness to those with whom we live and work and worship, that your love for us may overflow into extravagant love for all your children. 
we lift our hearts and voices to you. Hear us, good Lord. We pray on behalf of those who are suffering with pain, who are paralyzed by fear, who are listless and restless and tired. Relieve their misery, be with them in their distress, bring them to a new sense of hope and wholeness. We pray for Pat Allen, Louisa Anthony, Mary Bowden, Harriet Bowens, Silva Britt, Judy Coombs, Ida Demons, Ivory Duhart, Kimberly English, Benita Ford, Charles Fowler, Kayla Hall, Cleopatra Johnson, Leighton Johnson, Barbara Manson, Carl Manson, Gervis Manson, Francis B. Martin, Clarence Mitchell, Christy Moffat, Vincent Murray, Dorothy Ratliff, Mildred Singleton, Bonnie Smith, Edna Stevens, Emery Stevens, James Ward, Jerry Ward, Mary Ware, Ann Washington, Charlie Winston, and Jackie Ford Wright. We lift our hearts and voices to you. Hear us, good Lord. We rejoice with those who have entered the larger life, who now reside among the saints in light. We pray for those who mourn and who experience a deep loss. We pray today for Sarah Wood. Hear us, good Lord. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. If it's your first time with us, welcome home. If it's your umpteenth time with us, welcome home. We are glad that you are here with us online, worshiping and praying with us here at St. Paul's. If you are visiting with us for the first time, please let us know who you are. You can do that by simply e emailing us at uh, welcome at stpaulsatl.org, right there. Let us know who you are. Uh, do us the honor of allowing us to invite you into life together with this thriving and warm community of Christ followers here at St. Paul's. There's lots going on. Uh, Michael's going to update you in a minute about uh, the progress on the air conditioning. Uh, but I wanted to say you may have noticed some noise while I was preaching today. Uh, it's because they were hard at work on our AC. And so what you heard uh, was uh, your resources and your hard work um, at work going on uh, for the glory of God. So uh, we also have uh, noonday and evening prayer on Tuesday and Thursday this week. And Wednesday night we are reading Isaiah. I believe we're reading Isaiah 55 this week. So if you would like to join us and you haven't joined us yet, come and... Uh, Take part. We have a lively discussion every week. It's very energetic. Um, Isaiah is central to understanding Jesus. Um, he, he quotes Isaiah quite a bit. And um, the image of the suffering servant shows up in Isaiah that we are all too familiar with in the ministry, in the life, in the death and resurrection of Jesus. So we're glad that you are with us today. And please, uh, if you are able, come and join us in person. Uh, we are worshiping at 1115 here and having Holy Communion. 
and that will probably be uh, changing very soon. Uh, we are getting streaming equipment in place and the ability to live stream services. So very soon we'll be having one live stream service on Sunday morning. And you can all worship together. So be looking for more information about that real soon. Now I'll turn things over to the vestry for announcements. Good morning, St. Paul's. My name is Michael Blakely and I'm your senior warden. I'd like to thank you for worshiping with us this Sunday morning. If this is your first time, welcome home. We'd like to consider you one of ours now, and please come again. There are several announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, this is a birthday Sunday. For anyone celebrating a birthday in the month of October, I'd like to say happy birthday. The candidates running for mayor will have a forum on, via Zoom on uh, gun violence. Uh, please look at your e-news for information on that. Key dates to remember, October 31st, which will be Father Tim's last Sunday with St. Paul's. We'll have a uh, reception afterwards in Bowden Hall. And the 7th of November uh, will be Mother Samuel, first day here at St. Paul's, and we'll have a small reception afterwards also. The Fresh Market will start back up fall service uh, on October the 21st, Thursday. And we'll run for four consecutive consecutive weeks uh, and EYC first uh, official meeting will be today October the 10th at 2 p.m. via Zoom you can look at your e-news for information on how to get in touch with them on Zoom thank you and have a blessed day good morning St. Paul's my name is Randall Adams and I've been attending St. Paul's for approximately about 15 years or so um, and when I think about stewardship and what it means to me, um, I can't help but think about all the individuals who gave their time, their talent, and their treasure, whether it was in my youth or even now, to help me to become who I am today. And they didn't have a whole lot. And so I get joy and I can't help but be grateful in regards to that, in regards to stewardship. And when I think about the youth of today, um, they may be different, but they still require our talents, you know, and our time and our treasures as well. And if we want to pay it forward, we need to continue to be good stewards of the, the blessings that our divine creator has bestowed upon us. And so, um, I look forward to the upcoming years um, at St. Paul's and continue to be a good steward of the bounty that our divine creator, Jesus the Christ, has bestowed upon me and my family. Thank you, St. Paul's, and do be blessed. It's a second Sunday. And we get to bless October birthdays. And if you weren't able to send one in this week, uh, for, for October, please feel free to add them in the chat feature on Zoom or on Facebook uh, so they can be included in the prayers. Um, or just say their name as we uh, do the blessings today. Uh, Miles Johnson turned 10 on October 1st. Zuri Akua Dowell turned three years old on October 3rd. Twin brothers Jocelyn and Theodore Jarrett turned 77 years old. And Jonathan Jarrett turned 13 years old. On October 5th, Christopher Jarrett turned 48. Olivia Johnson turned 78 and Virginia Wright turned 84. On the 8th of October, Carol Stone Taylor had a birthday. Uh, today, Sunday, October 10th, is Olivia Babuka Black's birthday, my middle child. Happy birthday, Livy. Uh, on the 20th, Lana Revere will turn 15 years old. On the 25th, Dr. Lee Shelton has a birthday. On the 30th, Edmund Kai Toms will be 19. And on the 31st, Nate Revere will be five years old. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these, your servants, as they begin another year. 
Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everyone. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Goodbye for now. Have a great week. May the gracious light of God surround you this week and every week. And we'll see you here at St. Paul's real soon.